A childhood dream brought Val Gruner to Africa and the remote Kalahari Desert of Botswana. His work at Grasslands Game Farm, running a volunteer project and caring for captive rogue lions and wild dogs, is fraught with conflict and danger. But rescuing a dying lion cub changed his life forever. Serga is a hand-reared captive, born of wild parents. By rights, she should be dead or in a cage. But Val is determined to give her a chance at a free life and a hunting ground of her own. Can he save Serga from a life in captivity? Can he help her rediscover the wild predator within her? Yeah, when I took Serga, it was just a little line that was obviously dying. She wouldn't, she would have not survived. And it wasn't about wanting to hand raise a line or having a tame animal, anything like that. It was just about saving her life and making sure that, you know, that little cub that's so helpless and cute and and it's it's busy and dying that you just want to help it. That that was all. And what turned out and what happened afterwards, I think nobody could predict. And I didn't know what was going to happen, but obviously I developed a very strong relationship with the, with the little lion and um, I don't see anything bad about it. It made me very happy and I think she has a good life. Their friendship has survived seasonal and physical changes, danger and disease, and Serga's hunting skills have improved in leaps and bounds. It's time to back off and let her hunt on her own. She's almost three years old and weighs 140 kilograms. She could kill Val with one powerful blow, but she allows him to wrestle her down without unsheathing claws or bearing canines. How's that? It fits. Okay, good. Good. Should I take it off? Putting the camera on Serga is, is helping me a lot to, to see and understand what's happening while she's out hunting. Just because she's getting older and, and starting to run further away and doing the hunting more on her own. But, but for me to be able to see whether, whether I'm happy with having her released in, in her own hunting ground or not, it's, it's important to see okay how well she does the hunting, how long it takes and if, if the animal was sick before or not because I, I won't be able to see that after she's killed it. Um, and that way looking at the footage afterwards makes, makes it a lot easier for me to, to see how she's doing and how the, how the hunting really is happening. Um, besides that, it's, it's important for her later. We might have to put a, a, a satellite collar on her so we can, we can see her movement from a computer screen. And that way she's already used to wearing a collar and we won't have to doubt her again for that. Let's go. It is December and another rainy season has arrived in the Kalahari. Sarah was born in February, in the middle of the rainy season, almost three years ago. There is one final test she has to pass before coming of age as a huntress, and she has to do it on her own. As always, the first rains bring new growth and new life to the parched sands of the Galahari Thirstland. And for the first time in many months, the animals can slake their thirst. With the rains comes an opportunity for young predators to become self-sufficient and independent. On a rainy day in the middle of December, Val's new hands-off strategy pays off. Serga spots a wildebeest herd in the dense bush across the track. They are calves. Val hangs back and follows at a distance. Serga targets a calf. She sends it tumbling. She 
have it's another calf. A flick of the front paw and the calf goes down. But she doesn't hold on to it. She allows it to escape so that she can catch it again. But she doesn't deliver the kill bite. She looks around, waiting for Val. This time she's on her own. She seems bemused what to do next. She grabs it again, handling the calf as a child might a stuffed toy that squeaks. There's no empathy, no question of releasing it. There's also no real intent to harm or kill. Valus heard the chase. He saw the wildebeest run. He moves forward cautiously. What is happening with Serga is no different to what happens in the wild. Two cheetah cubs are learning to hunt. They have brought down a springbok lamb under supervision of their mother. She watches proceedings while keeping a sharp lookout for other predators. The cubs make no attempt to kill the lamb. When it keeps still, they lose interest. The instinct to chase is well developed, as with Serga. But killing prey seems to be something that has to be learnt, even by hungry wild predators like these. It's an initiation into the hunt and the start of the road to independence. In the end, the cheetah mother demonstrates how to kill the lamb and change it from a toy into food. Serga never had a lion mother to learn from. She's never practiced on small live prey. Valis killed large prey for her, but she's yet to kill on her own. And she's two years older than the cheetah cubs. It's a major gap in her development and a rite of passage she has to complete before she can become independent. As with the tortoises and the bullfrogs, she's curious and she's learning. But this time there's no vowel to stop her from exploring her wild instincts. She looks around again, waiting for Val to tell her what to do or to come and kill the calf. She's feeling the call of the wild. But like the young cheetahs, she shows no aggression, no natural born instinct to kill and devour. Like the cheetahs, she's more interested in chasing and catching than killing. And in his bid to save the prey from suffering, Val has done what the cheetah mother and Sergo's own mother would have done in the wild. And by staying away now, he's again doing what all cheetah and lion mothers eventually do. Now, I mean, it's it's terrible to to see Serga play with this baby wildebeest and how how it's screaming. But at the end of the day, she she's supposed to live free one day, and she has to make her own kills. And I, I just can't always go and, and help her. So this time, I think we just have to let it happen and and see how long it takes. Hopefully, she does it quickly. It's a story as old as time. One random death gives a young predator a vital opportunity to gain the skills and experience needed to become independent in a ruthlessly competitive world. The calf is the sacrifice which allows the rest of the herd to survive and breed again. Sega lies down with her prey. She waits for Val. 
Then, suddenly and without preamble, she kills it herself. Sega doesn't run to him. She waits quietly until he arrives. She shows no hostility towards him, even though the kill is small. Val has been spared the suffering, but there's no sense of celebration. The young calf is no more. Like the springbok lamb, it has transformed from a living entity into food. Sega allows Val to hoist the small body on his shoulders. She still cannot stay out in the bush on her own. Now, more than ever, she'd be shot by farmers if she were to go into a cattle farm. The kill has to go back to the enclosure. The young idealist who came to Africa to save predators has learnt a lot about life in the Kalahari since his arrival. His romantic dreams have been tempered in the forge of reality. Serga is no longer the cute little cub he rescued. She's well on her way to becoming the lethal predator nature intended her to be. Val watches quietly. He doesn't touch her kill or try to feed her. He has stepped back from active participation in the hunt to allow her free reign. But he is emotionally invested in this partnership. Stepping back from the friendship they share will be tough. He moves closer to remove the collar from her neck. She's watchful, but there's no aggression. Like the true Kalahari lion she is, she laps the moisture from the calf's belly. She's passed the test. She's made her first solo kill and recorded it from her own point of view. Val is delighted, but he realizes the time is fast approaching when she won't need him anymore. He's done what lion and cheetah mothers do in the wild, but allowing her to become completely independent will test his resolve. This year, the rainfall is less than average. All over grasslands, shrubs, trees and grasses rush to bloom and seed before it ends. There's not been enough rain to lure the bullfrogs from their underground hiding places. But all over Grasslands Game Farm, hartebeest, zebra, wildebeest, oryx and eland are giving birth. Most grazers are hardwired to drop their young at roughly the same time to ensure the survival of the species. There are not enough predators to kill them all. The mare has carried her cargo for 12 months. Now she remains close, so that a foal imprints on her alone. But all new life is tender and vulnerable. It takes time to come to grips with new surroundings and to learn the simple things, like staying upright. In the wild, lions are keystone species. They maintain the balance between prey species and their habitat. When lions are absent, most newborns survive, and the population explosion results in overgrazing.
Val's hands-off strategy is working. Serga has proved that she has what it takes to chase down her own food. She has also shown that killing doesn't come naturally to her. It's something she has to learn and perfect as she grows into independence. Learning to be a consistently successful solo hunter needs practice. The solo kill has no visible effect on the relationship between the young man and the lioness. He's not actively hunting with her any longer, but she still treats him as part of her pride, and she's as affectionate towards him as ever. Val taught her that antelope have lethal horns, but now she knows their calves are vulnerable. She still hates the collar. It's essential, because with newfound experience and confidence, Serga's ranging ever further from their core hunting area. But territories have boundaries. They've reached the end of grasslands. Beyond the fence lies a cattle farm with easy prey. Cows and donkeys. It is the one boundary Val cannot allow her to cross. Like a wild peers, Serga doesn't see the fence as a barrier. It's a minor obstacle to what lies beyond. She's never been here. The scent in her nose says there are different animals on the other side. But the African wilderness is no longer limitless. There are places she dares not go. Can't go in there, it's a clever farm. The sudden movement startles her. She's careful by nature, but she turns around for another look. The unknown is attractive. This is something new. It's like her enclosure fence, but different. Val's turn is clear. He doesn't want her to go there. The scent is irresistible. Val realizes that even if he creates a 2,000 hectare reserve for her, she will always try to find a way through. Lions are natural pioneers, and Serga will explore until she meets an insurmountable obstacle. But she trusts him. He's never led her into danger. He leads her away from the dangerous barrier. He knows nothing distracts her more effectively than a chase. She knows how this game is played now. She takes time to observe the movements of her prey. She doesn't charge in straight at her target. She uses the natural cover to move closer. a long-distance chase is counterproductive. It's better to recover and be ready for the next opportunity. Val takes longer to reach her now, but resting always means precious time with him. Being in the wild with him has become part of her life. It's part of the hunt, the wilderness, and the sound of weaver birds building their nests. She knows nothing of Val's plans for her. This is the only life she knows. Together they have built a mind map of their territory. They share a history. They know all the landmarks and all the animals that live here. They understand how the ebb and flow of the seasons affect the water and the movement of the herds.
When he's not with Serga, Val's normal work continues. He has to create extra space for the larger wild dog pack. Uh, we're yeah. moving um, six lines today. Three of this cage over here are supposed to move in the cage behind me. And um, the whole idea is so we have another cage empty at the moment where we want to build an electric fence. Once that is done, the lines will basically move back into the old cages. And there's two empty enclosures here at the moment, which we will use for our bigger group of lines that are meant to move in here. So we have all the lines in one block together, mainly because our wild dogs and the lions keep having a conflict at the fences where, they, um, where their enclosures are, are meeting up. Um, and we do not want the wild dogs to get used to, to having lions or fighting lions, because if they would do this in the wild, they most likely get killed. Um, so we, we're planning on moving all the lions over here um, in order to get the one big group away from the wild dogs and at the same time the wild dogs will get more than double the space they have at the moment which would be amazing um, so this is just the first steps moving some lines around so we can peacefully work in one of the other cages and once that is done we can move the rest of the lines over the life of a wild captive is often one of bored frustration their lives are spent waiting for feeding day and challenging other males through the fences between enclosures. Val wants to lure the lions through a simple hole in the fence into an adjacent enclosure to create more space for the wild dogs. It's a less stressful way of moving them from one enclosure to another. The timing is perfect. One of Willie's cows has died and extra meat has become available for that purpose. The debate about the difficulties involved in relocating captive rogues back into the wild and the merits in capturing them instead of shooting them is ongoing. A lion's roar carries more than eight kilometers in the Kalahari. Vili de Graaf observed that the roars of the captive lions on grasslands keep other lions and wild dogs away. These thoughts coincide with new research, exploring the use of a lion's roar as a sound boundary to keep lions as well as wild dogs away from fenced farming areas. Bell hopes the captive rogues on grasslands can aid such research and help resolve the conflict between farmers and predators. He drags meat behind the truck in the lion enclosure to entice the lions towards the opening. It works. The male with a short tail finds the opening almost immediately. Val makes noise to ensure that he doesn't go back with the meat but he's only worried that another lion might grab his share. It isn't long before the second lion takes the gap in the fence and his chunk of meat. And short tail share is safe. There's no need to fight. There's more than enough to go around. Once the last line is through the opening, Val quickly closes the gap. Moving the lines takes less than 30 minutes and there's no need for tranquilizers. The Leo can be untied from the back of the truck because the lines are preoccupied with their unexpected windfall. There is little danger to Val and Gully, his friend and co-worker, and the hole in the fence is easy to repair. Moving the lions is vital because there's been an unexpected development in the wild dog enclosure. 
Willie's attempts to save orphan wild dogs have succeeded beyond all expectations. The alpha female has given birth to eight puppies. That's when wild dogs are killed on cattle farms. Very interesting about this uh, uh, wild dogs are that if they have puppies in a den, they don't hunt close by because they don't want to attract other predators to the den where the puppies are. But unfortunately, it's also true that, uh, you know, the farmers hate wild dogs because they are the most successful killers and they hunt in a large pack. So once they have a den like this, they have to kill a lot to feed the puppies until they uh, come to an age where they can go with the adult dogs. So, you know, if you find a den like this, the easy way to kill them is to put poison close to the den. Then you kill the adult dogs as well as the puppies because the adult dogs come and feed the puppies. So they will come back to the den and eventually they will be killed by the poison. So that's the danger that we are facing here. I went to the ministry in uh, Gaborones and uh, I've taken it up with the people there that uh, can we not do something to try and save at least the puppies in the den. So if we can get permission from them to save those little puppies, we can at least take them and come and raise them and try to put them back into the wild. You know, it costs nothing to try something. Let's try it because we all know they are in danger. If we can only go to the farmers and tell them once they find a den with puppies, we will go and we will save them and dig them out and bring them here and raise them. If we can only relocate one pack that would survive in, 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 uh, in nature, I think we have achieved something. We have to try and we will never know unless we, we try. The captive wild dog population at Grasslands has skyrocketed from 6 to 25. There are new developments on the hunting front too. A large herd of eland has entered the hunting ground in search of fodder. Serga follows the spoor. She's chased small groups of eland before. But Val and Serga have never encountered a herd this size. Val adjusts the camera on Serga's neck. She takes no notice. The herd is 400 strong. In her excitement, Serga forgets all that she's learnt. She charges straight at them. There are eland and eland tracks everywhere. She doesn't know where to start. Then she remembers. She's supposed to hide in ambush and wait for them to come closer. It works. They know she's there, but they're relaxed. Again, her enthusiasm gets the better of her. is enormous. No matter where she looks, they're there. It's confusing. She doesn't know which one to target. Then she retreats back into cover once more. The herd marches by, they're confident, there's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. 
Sega can contain herself no longer. She targets the largest one. The herd is starting to take notice. The dense vegetation covers her approach. She strikes again. She targets a large bull at the rear of the herd. She's closer than ever. Stampedes. By the time Val catches up with her, she's lying in the shade. The herd has been spooked. It's no use chasing them now. It's time to blend back into the quiet world around them. Here, a lion chase has little significance, but mineral salts are in high demand. A scarab beetle rolls his five centimeter dung ball to a chosen spot and starts construction on a secret chamber. The scarab has a plan. He will deposit the dung ball in the chamber. Then he'll find a mate willing to stay underground with their eggs. He'll be long gone by then, but she won't leave the nest to feed until their young family is ready to emerge with her. Val's sweaty toes are magnets for the butterflies. Serga's dense fur protects her during the chase, but her feet are vulnerable. She's picked up a thorn. She has to remove it before she can hunt again. They sit quietly, not communicating. Dal's scratched his leg. It's hurting and he's thirsty, but it has to wait. The thorn in Sega's left front paw is still there. It's hard to chase Eland with a sore foot. The herd hasn't moved far. With running repairs complete, the hunters watch and bond before proceeding. This time she hides under cover and watches the herd. But the Ilant are skittish now. Chasing them serves no purpose. Following the Ilant herd has taken four hours. It's thirsty work. Vela's radioed for a water bottle to be left on a track. It's a lifesaver for him. But when it comes to water, Serga has never been one to hold back. Vela's learned to wait. She could also do with a salty snack, like Bell's toe, perhaps. Bell has a scratch on his leg. It's bleeding. She licks the wound and grimaces again to open the tiny ducts in her mouth that lead to the Jacobson scent organ in her brain. She's memorizing the scent of his blood. She has picked up another thorn in her right front paw. It's painful. She rests her head on it, showing him where it hurts, but she's reluctant to let him touch it. Once the thorn is removed, she rubs heads with him. It's a universally recognizable gesture of gratitude and acceptance. She's ready to move on. They rested, their injuries have been seen to, and Serga is in no mood to stop hunting. The 
There's movement in the distance. Val cleans the camera lens. He wants her to record the hunt as she sees it. She ignores him. She's focused on what's ahead. Then she turns and rubs heads with him, including him in her circle, in her hunt. He doesn't push her. She has to take her own time and make her own decisions. muscles in her legs are relaxed. And there's new confidence in her bearing. She's found fresh tracks. She sits down. It's the preamble to the hunt. She wants to listen. Then she relaxes again. But Val keeps her moving. It's hot. He doesn't want her to lie down in the shade. The tracks are fresh. It's a small herd of wildebeest with young calves. They're behind the trees. She moves off at an angle. follows at a distance. Her ears swivel to pinpoint the direction of the sound. Her nose analyzes and confirms what her ears tell her. They are there. doesn't hurry. The wildebeest are resting. They haven't moved much. One lay down here earlier. They are uneasy, but they're not sure why. She knocks the calf down, but the mother challenges her from the side. She veers away and targets another calf. The calf escapes. She's focused now. The mother leads the calf around the bush. Serga anticipates her movement. She crashes through the bush. Her second solo kill ever is over. It's quick and clean. She puts the calf down and looks for Val. Then she turns back to her kill. This time there's no play. There's no sense of triumph. The time for games is over. She's come of age. Val lags behind, trying to track the chase. There's been no bleating or sound of a struggle. Come back now. You had a chase here. There you go. Serga doesn't respond. She lies quietly, listening to him calling. 
She shifts the kill and looks up, listening. Vega? He's coming closer. She waits, enjoying the secret hidden moments with her kill. Vega? Val stops. He's heard something. It could be Serga breathing. Come here, man. She walks towards him, responding to his call. Then she turns back and lies down again. She doesn't want to leave her kill. Val continues to search. The bush is dense. The tracks are confused. If she remains quiet, he won't find her. She could disappear into the Kalahari forever. He doesn't know if she's been injured. Perhaps she was kicked or gored by a wildebeest. Sergo waits with her kill. She trusts him to find her. He always does. Hey, this way. Val hears a sound, but he's not sure of the direction. The reunion is joyous. This is the moment Val has been working toward. It's the best gift he could ever have hoped for. It couldn't have happened at a better time. She runs back to show him her kill. She hugs him again in a show of excitement, the first since she's brought down the calf. Then she lies down and allows him to sit with her to share the moment. It's been a six hour hunt. They're both footsore and exhausted. He needs to get her back to the enclosure. But to wrestle her kill away could jeopardize everything he's worked for. He talks quietly and moves slowly, politely, asking her tacit permission, and she responds to his tone. It still amazes him that she allows him to take her kill without attacking him. Sergo watches from the shade. She trusts the man with her kill, the one thing most wild lions will go to battle for. She doesn't like vehicles, and she's never been transported in one. The two of them go everywhere on foot. They'll have to walk all the way back to the enclosure. Yeah, it's a, it's a big relief to see that Sergo has finally killed a wildebeest the way a, a wild lion would kill it, and I'm, I'm just so happy that, that it's worked out, and she's definitely getting ready now to, to be moving on into a bigger area where she can hunt for herself and yeah, after so many years of working that's just the, the best thing that could have, could have happened. She watches as the truck takes a kill away. She follows the car. Then she looks at Val. She distinguishes between Val and the vehicle. She trusts Val. It's the vehicle she distrusts. But she knows when she gets back to the enclosure, her kill will be waiting for her. Val has never let her down. They've known one another for almost three years. Despite Serga's physical development and success in the hunt, the morning greeting and the embrace has never changed. Lions are not credited with much intelligence. 
They don't have large brains and are perceived as powerful carnivores ruled by instinct. But the undeniable connection between these two friends shows how little we know about the heart of a lion. Serva has shown that she's a complex individual capable of independent action and emotional attachment, and she can learn. She's definitely become better at playing football with the summer melons. She's developed her coordination and fine motor skills to the point where she can dribble the melon on her own. No defense in the world would dare challenge her on a football field. Yeah, what, what Sugar has done for me, and it's hard, hard to I don't know, explain it with, with normal words. I mean, the, a lot of people know how it is to have a you know, close relationship with an animal and what a, what a normal a dog, a pet, can, can give back to you. And what I get back from Sugar, from a, a wild animal, a, a lion of, of all animals, is yeah, it's quite overwhelming. It's just the time of my life. I, I'm happy that, that, that we could save her, but I'm also very thankful that I had the opportunity to experience this. Bell is overjoyed. When he rescued the helpless victim of the conflict between humans and predators, he made a promise. She would not spend her life as a bored and frustrated captive lion in an enclosure. That promise has governed his life for almost three years. Instead of leaving her in the enclosure, he provided stimulus and opportunity for the young lioness. Along the way, he has won a lifelong friend and has done what no one has done before. He has hunted on foot with a lioness and journeyed into her generous and courageous heart. Serga has become a successful soul huntress that can hunt her own food in the wild. He has come to understand her body language like he understands human speech. He knows every whirl in her fur and every small imperfection. She knows every expression on his face, every nuance in his tone, every detail of his scent. They have spent more time together than most friends or families do in a lifetime. Yeah, if I could go back and, you know, have that situation again where I have to make a decision whether or not to hand raise the little cub. I definitely think there's no, there's no option once it's there and, and you are responsible. Of course you try to save the life. So there's no regrets. I don't think there was anything wrong. And yeah, I mean, if, if I look at her now, she's a happy lion. She's got a good life. She's healthy. And if I wouldn't have taken her, she'd be a dead lion that wouldn't exist anymore. So. Even though she's a tame lion and will never be released and out where, where normal wild lions would be, I think she has a happy life and, and it was a good thing to, to take and raise her by hand. For Suga's future, my goal is definitely to see her like a wild lion one day, not in a cage anymore. I just take her out for, for walks and she obviously is ready for that now, so we will have to work hard on making, making everything happen. But having watched her so much in the wild and on the walks, how, how she enjoys being outside, it's obvious that that should be a life for her. It will be too dangerous to just release her and simply because she, she poses a threat to, to humans and nobody wants that. Besides that, humans are dangerous to lions and I, I really would love to make sure that, that nothing can happen to Suga but that she has the, the best life possible.
and yeah, I'm really hoping to be able to fence in a, a small park where she can live by herself, but where she can still go and see her, where she's safe from, from people and, and people are safe from the lion. And that'll definitely be the next step to, to move her into her own area and hopefully let her meet another lion because that, that should be part of her life and something that she deserves. Serga has come of age. She's Serga the Huntress, a lioness with a future. And like the futures of all the lions in Africa, hers will ultimately depend on the goodwill of humans.